Dry farming safflower in the Sierra foothills has been around for many years, and now with the rising price of food, need for oil to make biofuels, and new varieties techniques, it can be profitable to grow on foothill rangeland. Currently, we are looking for horticulturalists and landowners to help define oil agriculture on unirrigated hills of California. I tested safflower at my small farm near Yosemite to determine how millions of dry rangeland acres can also produce oil. The trial during drought years demonstrated how well safflower grows unwatered and unweeded. Oil production was upwards of 80 gallons per acre. Safflower brings its best price as a food. With the possibility of more than 100 million gallons per year from California foothills, it could also produce biodiesel without impacting food supplies and stimulate a new cottage industry in depressed rural communities. Here's a safflower plant. Give you an idea of what this is like. Branched, multiple heads, thistle thing. Protect yourself from all the thorns. You might take a look. All these little heads will take about have about 30 to 40 little seeds in there that are squeezed out for oil. Here's how it worked. The first year, safflower seeds were broadcasted and tilled directly into freshly rototilled fields during March. Half a day from years of growing grass to growing gas. That was it. Done until harvest. The second year, another field was tilled a month and a half before the four varieties of safflower seeds were drill planted. Within weeks, the seeds sprouted into frost-resistant rosettes. The first year had no weed competition because tilling and planting were simultaneous, and the deer roamed freely, eating everything but the safflower. As a vegetable farmer, deer are the enemy. Here, they worked for us. Next year, weeds took advantage of a two-month head start, less rain, and the deer were fenced off. Gophers were present in both years and had no noticeable effect. Through May, the tough rosettes grew thick. In June, the warm weather branches plants up to knee high. Bees are very active on the beautiful July blossoms, and flower petals can also be used as saffron substitute or clothing dye. Taproots reach 8 to 10 feet deep in August, as this thistle-like plant turns brown from the bottom up. Safflower might resist fire, but heat of mid-August turns foliage to a crisp brown and fully ripens heads with 30 to 50 seeds each. My test crop grew great without fertilizers, but nitrogen enrichment should be included. For a yield analysis, I hand harvested 100 square foot plots and brought it to a combine. Manual methods won't handle volume. I've segmented off a 10 foot by 10 foot square in the middle of the safflower to harvest just enough to determine yield. Oil-producing varieties are plant variety protected, and SeedTech, the world's largest safflower producer, provided these seeds, which are normally rented as part of a harvest purchase contract. Like small grains, safflower is drawn into a combine where the dried flower heads are shattered and thrashed. Blowing air separates the refuse and pure seeds pour out. With these ribs, it basically shatters it, just sort of chews it. And the, the good seed kind of falls down and goes through a quick cleaning system and ends up there. Yeah, the air up here in the cyclone, it kind of spins around in it, and the lighter stuff blows out the top while the seed settles down into the bottom. Safflower complements rangeland. The cattle can eat crop residue and combine refuse. Oil cake after squeezing is also very nutritious animal feed. Uh, my name is Scott Onetto and I'm a farm advisor with the University of California Cooperative Extension and today I'm out here with uh, local farmer Mark Zoller uh, testing whether or not safflower could be grown uh, dry farmed in the uh, Sierra Nevada foothills. Uh, and here we typically have a lot of poor soils, lots and lots of dry annual rangeland, possibly come up with some alternatives for uh, local landowners in growing other commodities besides pasture for livestock. And uh, this is the second year that uh, we've tested or have looked at safflower. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, got a pretty good size um, uh, plant to it. Um, safflower is uh, planted in the early spring 
and it's an annual that uh, pretty much grows through the summer months and then ripens late summer early fall and is then harvested and uh, the idea is to try to grow safflower again dry farmed without any supplemental irrigation on poor soils. Uh, I think next year we're going to try to replicate the trial uh, maybe on a little bit larger scale again looking at uh, multiple varieties uh, but we think that really the uh, key to this will be uh, not only getting the safflower planted a little bit earlier in the springtime so it has plenty of uh, time to get established. We'd also like to maybe look at uh, testing some different uh, fertilizing uh, regimes, seeing if uh, the additional uh, application of nitrogen fertilizer uh, will increase uh, overall crop production. The University of California Cooperative Extension Farm Advisor wants to grow more test plots at the 1 to 2,000 foot level of the Sierra foothills. We are now looking for participants who have rangeland or open property in the foothills.